Classical mechanics works best on a macroscopic scale, where particles and waves behave very differently from each other. We can use an equation to describe the parabolic arc of a golf ball through the air. A very different equation would be used to describe waves in a pond. Quantum mechanics works best on a microscopic scale, where there is no clear separation between particles and waves. We have seen light, which is typically thought of as a wave, behaving like a particle. Now we will look at electrons, which are typically thought of as particles, behaving as waves. There is an equation called the de Broglie equation that relates the particle and wave natures of an object. Anytime the problem mentions de Broglie, use this equation. In the equation is lambda wavelength, which is a characteristic of waves. Also in this equation are mass and velocity, which are typical of particles. The typical form of the equation is lambda wavelength equals h Planck's constant over mu, mass times velocity. I am using the letter u to represent velocity instead of the letter v because we have several equations in this chapter with the Greek letter nu representing frequency, and I'm hoping using u will make you less likely to mix them up. As we use this equation, we need to make sure we have the correct units. Wavelength must be in meters. I have given you Planck's constant in joules times seconds earlier in this chapter, but we are here going to use the units kilograms meters squared over seconds. These are equivalent units to joules times seconds, but will allow us to cancel out the other units in our problem. The mass in this problem must be in kilograms, not grams. The velocity is in meters per second. Here is an example. What is the de Broglie wavelength of a 25 gram bullet traveling at 612 meters per second? H equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 kilograms meters squared per second. The first thing we need to do is check our units. Mass is given to us in grams, but it needs to be in kilograms. We convert 25 grams into kilograms by dividing by 10 to the third and we come out with 0 0.025 kilograms. Since we are solving for wavelength, we leave our equation as is, but if we were solving for mass or velocity, we would have to rearrange our equation. We plug in our numbers. Kilograms cancels out with the kilograms. Seconds in the denominator of the numerator cancels out with seconds in the denominator of the denominator. One of the meters out of the meter squared cancels out with meters in the denominator. So we're left with the other meters as our units. We come out with 4.3 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. What is the de Broglie mass of a photon of light with a wavelength of 366 nanometers and moving at a velocity of 8.55 meters per second? h equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 kilograms meters squared per second. Is the answer a 1.55 times 10 to the minus 35 kilograms, b 2.84 times 10 to the minus 38 grams, c 2.12 times 10 to the minus 25 grams, or d 2.08 times 10 to the minus 30 kilograms? The correct answer is C, 2.12 times 10 to the minus 25 grams. First, we rearrange our lambda equals h over mu equation to solve for mass. To get mass by itself on one side of the equal sign, we do a little math trick and have the lambda and the m switch places. You could also do the rearranging old school and multiply both sides by m and divide both sides by lambda. We check our units. Our wavelength is given to us in nanometers, but we need it in meters. So we multiply by 10 to the minus 9 and come out with 3.66 times 10 to the minus 7 nanometers. We plug in the numbers into our rearranged equation and come out with 2.118 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. That number doesn't match answers A or D, so we need to convert our answer to grams. We do that by multiplying by 10 to the 3 
and come out with 2.12 times 10 to the minus 25 grams, which is C. Electrons can be passed through a diffraction grating and end up showing interference patterns on the detector, similar to how light shows interference patterns in the double slit experiment. When there are only a few electrons, you see the electrons as individual dots, representing their particle nature. When there are a lot of electrons, they make bands with wave-like patterns. There is an important principle in quantum mechanics called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, which says that it is impossible to know the position and momentum of a particle at the same time. Basically, we can describe regions where a particle like an electron is likely to be found, but we can't pinpoint it at any given time. The regions where electrons are likely to be found are called orbitals. Each orbital can hold up to two electrons. We use an equation called the Schrodinger equation to mathematically describe orbitals. This equation can be turned into a sort of graph to give us a picture like the one on this slide, showing where the electrons are likely to be found. We are not going to go over the whole Schrodinger equation, but we are going to focus on the numbers that go into the equation, quantum numbers. The quantum numbers tell us very useful information about size, shape, and orientation of the orbitals the equation describes for each electron in an atom.